What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at it again with another video. So we're gonna check out 10 WWE finishers that actually put the opponent over. I recently just checked out a video of wrestlers not putting over people's finishers or like not selling it in a sense. Like they get hit with the finisher, they eat the pin and they get right back up. Well, now we're checking out a video where the wrestlers actually put over the finishers and it looks devastating. The move look credible. And that's just an important part of wrestling, in my opinion. I think a lot of you guys will agree, man. When it comes to putting people over, it makes it makes the match what it is you don't want to be facing someone or you you know you see on television someone is you know going at it with an individual and they're just no selling all the moves like it comes off it's phony it doesn't come off it doesn't give that realism it, it just looks weird so it, it's always good to see when wrestlers put over other wrestlers by selling their moves sometimes you can sell it uh, well you can oversell and then it, it becomes kind of kind of hokey you know kind of comical but we're gonna check this out appreciate all the love and support you guys have been showing on the channel man i appreciate you guys and let's get right into this bad boy there have been several instances throughout wwe history oh, when a wrestler's beautiful finishing help their opponent get over from extremely impressive selling to a kick out of an iconic finishing move making a wrestler look credible, legitimate and heroic, mm -hmm. these finishes have elevated that wrestler and have actually created some of the most memorable moments in all of WWE. So join us now as WrestleMania looks at 10 WWE finishes that actually put the opponent over. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling subscribe videos. Subscribe to WrestleMania if you Facebook haven't already. For exclusive lists. Also check out WrestleMania.co.uk and on wrestling channel Incredible. Number 10, Hulk Hogan's leg drop, mm. The Rock. Now, in terms of protected WWE finishes, the most protected of all time could potentially be yeah, Hulk Hogan's leg, leg drop. drop. The move was rarely kicked out of, and if a wrestler ever managed to successfully kick out of it, it was presented as a huge deal. Mm -hmm. When The Rock collided with Hogan at WrestleMania 18 in a dream match, and Hogan performed the signature leg drop, fans assumed that the match was officially over. But to the shock of the audience, the people's yep. champion kicked out. This kick out showed fans that The Rock was as tough as they come. And it also highlighted a clear picture of just how they valued The Rock. Number nine. The crazy thing is, like, people have hit the leg drop and they'll just kick out of it. But when Hulk Hogan hit his leg drop for whatever reason, it was like getting hit with an atomic bomb. You were done for the night. So it's crazy how some finishers used to be, like, I guess you could say devastating back in the day. And now they're just used as setup moves. For example, the super kick, Shawn Michaels super kick. Once it was hit, nine times out of ten, you thought that opponent was done for. Now people just hit super kicks all the time, and it's really not that effective. The Cobra JTG. Oh, well, former no. former WWE star JTG is mostly known for his work alongside Shaq Gaspard oh, in the popular tag team Crime Time. However, Cobra. fans often associate JTG for one of the most hilarious oversells in WWE oh, history. God. JTG was wrestling Santina Morella in 2013 on WWE Superstars, and during the closing moments of the match, he was hit with a Cobra. Oh, for whatever reason, JTG decided bro, to sell the move by convulsing. <laughs> It looked like he was having an exorcism in the middle of the ring. It was a fantastic sell that didn't just give credibility to Morella's often mock finishing move, but it also showed fans as well as WWE that was a phenomenal seller. Bro. Remember when I said sometimes you can oversell and it just become comical? That's exactly what he did. I mean, let's be honest. Like, the Cobra, I, I could never take seriously, bro. Like, I, I, I couldn't take Santino seriously, let alone that fucking move of him just having a goddamn snake snake sock over his hand. You know, at least with the mandible claw with Mick, um, with Mick Foley, you know, it seemed like, you know, that, that probably would be unpleasant having someone's stinky sock <laughs> stuffed down your throat. But, dog, you... I, I, <laughs> This, this was his most devastating attack. This right here, bro. L look at this. Just devastating, bro. Following footage of his notorious selling going viral on social media, people wanted to see him pushed and show off his selling on a weekly basis. <laughs> Unfortunately, the request was squashed as, according to JTG, the Cobra sell actually made some members of WWE management angry. 
Number yeah. eight, the pile driver Taz. Probably it's so. well documented that Taz's in ring run in WWE was a total failure. Whilst Taz was initially presented as a potential main event talent, he was quickly moved down the card. Mm -hmm. There was one highlight of his time as an in-ring competitor in WWE. His feud in the summer of 2000 with Jerry the King Lawler was rather entertaining and showed that Taz had a ton of charisma. Mm -hmm. Taz and Lawler would collide at SummerSlam and there were even signs <laughs> of match that the old ECW Taz was returning. During the match, Lawler would hit Taz with a pile driver. Lawler's pile driver is one of the most protected he no in sold it. wrestling. Amazingly, Taz completely... And it's crazy because this was in the video I was talking about where wrestlers no selling finishes. He no sold it. He no, he just got right back up like, Let's try this again, bro. Completely no sold the move and immediately got to his feet. This made him look oh like my. a monster, and the reaction from the Attitude Era audience spoke volumes of how well received the particular spot was. That's crazy. Number seven, RKO Ricochet. That's common in oh. WWE. For uh, I'm pretty sure we know what clip. Uh, he's about to show Ricochet is fantastic at selling and making you look like a million bucks. An oversell to go viral and in turn make the person responsible for the oversell insanely <clears throat> popular with fans. This was certainly the case when Ricochet over-delivered an mm -hmm. unbelievable sell of the iconic RKO in 2019. This was the really good, bro. The sell took place during Ricochet's match with Drew like McIntyre broke his neck. Ford You'll during see. the closing moments of the match. As Randy Orton would slide into Look the ring this. and perform <laughs> RKO, Ricochet sold the move by landing on the top of his head. It was one of the best sells of the RKO any wrestler has ever delivered. And fans were quick to offer praise to Ricochet on social media. Ricochet, man. <laughs> If you want your move to be devastating, hit up Ricochet. Now, one of the reasons why the sell of the RKO was so notable was that it didn't just make Ricochet look like one of the best sellers in all of oh the Oh my WWE. god, bro. It made the RKO look incredibly devastating. It was simply marvelous work from the former US champion. Number six, the tombstone Shawn Michaels. The acclaimed showdown between Michaels and The Undertaker at WrestleMania Classic. 25 Classic is adored match. by fans. It's going to be a match that is celebrated for decades to come. For sure. One of the most memorable spots in the match took place when Taker performed a tombstone pile driver on HBK. And this finishing move had been protected mm -hmm. to such an extent that it was rare that anyone would ever kick out of it. Only a select few wrestlers had ever kicked out of the move and HBK was one of them. The dead man performed the move, but to the shock of fans in the audience, HBK kicked out. Fantastic. It was unbelievable to witness. The kickout made HBK look like the ultimate babyface, and the Undertaker's insane reaction to his kickout took the spot to a whole new level. When he initially kicked out that first time, and you have Jim Ross calling it, bro, I thought for the very first time, oh shit, I think he may end the streak here. I had goosebumps. I'm getting goosebumps just talking about it. Oh, my God. Such a legendary moment. If you have not seen it, haven't seen this match, I don't know how you haven't. Go check it out. WrestleMania 25, Undertaker versus Shawn Michaels. Cool. Number five, Manhandle Slam, Bianca Belair. Love this move. put in a ton of effort into making sure Becky Lynch's Manhandle Slam was protected. This was the move that Lynch would squash Belair with back in 2021, and it was a move that, whilst not too impressive visually, was awarding Lynch great success. Yeah, in nah, ring. I like the move. When Lynch and Belair collided once again at WrestleMania 38, the first few moments of the match saw yeah. Lynch and Belair handle slam. Yeah. Fans were speechless. I thought the match was over. I was like, not again. Don't do this to her again. Because I like that move. You know, it's like a variation of like a rock bottom. I like, you know, it's quick, very impactful. Look like it can hurt, especially if you. You know, hit somebody with it, like on some chairs or whatever. But it also depends on the selling. But at this point, definitely thought, oh, no, they're about to, no way they're going to screw her out of this, right? No way she loses like this. No. Fans actually believed that the match was going to end. I thought it was still, once oh, again no. squash Bel Air. But thankfully, Bel Air kicked out. Kick out made Bel Air even more credible. And it showed yeah. fans that this wasn't Woo. the same Bel Air that Lynch had defeated months prior. I was like, no, Number not four, this way. Stone Cold Stunner, of the course. Rock. Of the course. One of the most well known finishing <laughs> moves in all of wrestling. Yep. The move has resulted in some iconic moves <laughs> that have been replicated by talents such as John Cena and Kevin Owens. Yep. But when fans think of the Stunner, they often think of The Rock's sell of the move. As whenever Austin and The Rock would collide in a match, The Rock sold the move in the most over-the-top way imaginable. <laughs> he would flip his body all over the ring in a dramatic <laughs> manner. The Stunner <laughs> stunner really helped elevate The Rock and make the feud between the two legends even more memorable. The reason for The Rock selling the Stunner in the manner he did was that he wanted to make Austin laugh. And the Great One would try to make each more sell outlandish than the last. Number three. And the crazy thing is, a lot of I've seen some people say they're not a big fan of when The Rock 
would oversell the stunner. They kind of felt like it took away from it. And I can understand that because he would be flopping all over the place. But as a kid watching it, bro, I thought that was the funniest shit ever. I thought it was the, f the coolest shit ever. Even watching it back now, I, I can appreciate the comedy in it or whatnot. Uh, I, I don't know, man. It, it, it worked. When he got hit with the stunner, you knew, like, it just, it, it, it worked. You know what I'm saying? So, I'm, I'm one of those people where if it makes sense and, you know, it's entertaining, for the most part, I'm, I'm cool with it. Even though the Cobra and uh, what's his name, uh, JTG, uh, I think I said it right, JTG, selling it, overselling it. It was funny. It was meme-worthy. It's just I couldn't take the wrestler serious, but I could take both of these guys seriously, even if The Rock is flopping around like a fish. It's The Rock and Stone Cold. The running knee, Kofi Kingston. A Kofi Mania was one of the most compelling storylines of the modern era, and the work oh, from of course. everyone involved was exceptional. The Kofi Mania storyline began at the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view in 2019, as Kingston mm -hmm. was involved in the Elimination Chamber match for the title, and the final two in the match were Kingston and reigning WWE Champion Daniel Bryan. WWE decided to do something different for the match, and Kingston and Bryan would have had a full-on 10-minute epic war as the that final two competitors. That shit was so good. Yet during this mini-match, Bryan would hit his trademark running knee on Kingston, and fans believed it was actually Kingston over. Sold his it. running knee was protected as a finishing move, and yep. it was a great indication that the match was finally over. But Kingston managed to kick out, and you could tell by the reaction from the audience that they thought the match That's... was instant. This, 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 this moment here solidified as... Kofi Kingston, it, it was his time. It was his time. Oh, this was so good. Definitely over. Kingston kicking out of the mood showed that he was a heroic babyface and that he was quite rightly presented as a huge deal. Mm -hmm. It was expertly done, and this particular spot really helped plant the seeds for Kingston's WWE title victory at Facts. WrestleMania 35. Number two, the end of days, Drew McIntyre. A Baron Corbin's end of days oh, finishing yeah. move was unprotectedly protected up until April 2022. Mm -hmm. The finishing move was so crazy that end WWE of days. wouldn't even have top talent such as John Cena and Roman Reigns kick out of the move. However, when it came to Drew McIntyre, they made an exception. Corbin mm -hmm. would hit the end of days, and it was believed that Corbin had just secured the victory. In one of the most shocking moments in recent times, McIntyre kicked out. That shit was a great, great moment. Because usually, I mean, he had 100% rating with that. Like, 100% from the field. No one kicked out of the end of days since he was in WWE. Nobody kicked out of it. It, it was the most protected move at that time. And he kicked out at WrestleMania. And I was like, oh, he's about to win. Holy fucking shit. Crowd popped big for that. Because I was not expecting that. That was a surprising moment. Baron Corbin... I love his end of days, bro. End of days is such a beautiful transitional move. You can just hit somebody with it. It just looks so good and devastating. Now, it was handled really well by WWE, and it was a satisfying payoff to years of protecting one of the best finishing moves in WWE. And number one, Stone Cold Steve Austin, the uh, sharpshooter. Yeah. WrestleMania infamous, 13 infamous, was responsible infamous. for one of the most important double turns in all of WWE. Yep. Steve Austin would face off against arch rival Bret Hart, and the match is known for Austin ascending to the very top of the wrestling world. The match itself was tremendous, but it's the final stages of the match which truly stand out. Following the then babyface Hart showing heel tendencies throughout the match, uh -huh. Hart would lock in the sharpshooter on Austin. At this stage, Austin's face was covered in blood, and it ultimately created a visual that would be synonymous with the career of the Texas Rattlesnake. Instead of tapping out, Austin passed, passed out. out from the pain. He refused to give up in the most babyface act possible. The reason this worked so well is that it still kept the legitimacy of Hart's finishing move intact yep. while still presenting Austin as a never say die wrestler that was never going to surrender. Yep. It was masterfully delivered by both men, and Austin quite rightly refers to the match as the greatest song he ever sang. But they nah, that match right there, that, that was so, it, it, it worked so well because he didn't tap out. He didn't tap out. He passed out due to the pain. And people buy into that. Yeah, he lost the match, but people buy into that because like, oh, bro, he's really tough. He ain't tap. Everybody else taps. He passed out. Blood running down his face, passing out. I refuse to quit. I love that, bro. I love that. And the double turn. You know, he, once that happened, Stone Cold, would, he, he had to be a face. It was going to be impossible 
to not want to cheer the guy that didn't tap out to the sharpshooter. And you're like, damn, I want to see him try to get the title from uh i want to see him go for the title like i want to see him where he can go because he didn't brett couldn't even make him tap you know what i'm saying so I, I i can appreciate that double turn it was a legendary moment in wrestling legendary moment for both uh individuals both wrestlers so yeah man this was a great video man comment down below let me know i want to know what's your favorite finisher of all time it doesn't it only have to even be in wwe it can be AEW, new japan let me know your favorite finisher of all time for me personally i when i think of a finisher I, i'm i'm probably gonna go i'm thinking more so rko is really good that uh, that rko is so good especially depending on how it's hit uh rko is fantastic um uh, but i think for me always it'll either be out of the rock bottom or the stone cold stunner i i love those moves just because i love the wrestlers man so comment down below let me know but i appreciate all love support roll to 100k appreciate y'all kicking me see y'all on the next one peace